morning guys it's wednesday june 28th getting closer to the 4th of july mom's birthday the 5th i really wanted to get the house done by the 5th for mom's birthday and surprise her with the party here there's no way that's happening we got all kinds of problems with getting materials <coughs> permits drawings a lot, a lot of stuff uh but we're here um Oh, it's been a rough day. Okay, so let's talk about what we got done yesterday. Yesterday, I, uh, I ended up going to the Menards yesterday in the drawing center for new drawings for the kitchen. Uh, we've been having a little bit of issues with the kitchen. We're, the, we're going back and forth. Uh, this is the fourth time we're doing it. <coughs> Hopefully it's done. I... Going backwards is not the way to go. Uh, so what the first problem was is our first drawing. Our problem is the refrigerator. Our first drawing, the refrigerator was on this back wall, uh, which was great. But it did take a lot of space, and it made the kitchen super big, which is what I was going for. Um, but we were—I was rejected of that idea. So they want to use this area for the table now. Uh, perfect. Uh, the idea was to put the refrigerator on this wall next to the window here um that was fine and dandy <clears throat> the only difference is or the only problem with i saw with it was it's too close to the sink and the sink is going to end up here in the middle of this window and if uh we're going to be in the middle of the window there that's going to be an issue where the refrigerator would end I kind of put this piece of drywall up here as a story pole. If you notice, it's all along the whole kitchen. <clears throat> I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, where the refrigerator would end would be basically here. Without it basically touching the sink, leaving maybe a foot between the sink and the refrigerator. And I hate that. The major problem with that was always the difference of space between here and here. Um, this is only a five foot opening with the refrigerator where it's where it is. There has to be a minimum of 36 inches of space. It's there, but the problem is the refrigerator sticks out another four inches, which would make it not there. <laughs> and then when you open the refrigerator door, that also would reduce it down another 13 inches, which is going to only leave you about 15 inches of space, which is not going to pass code. It's major no, no. So we redid it again. Uh, second time we did it, we brought the refrigerator onto this wall. So how this worked out, it was the refrigerator would end up basically here, super close to the window. Uh, that was an issue for me too, because I just don't like the way it looked aesthetically. <clears throat> and it was going into the living room. I didn't think that was right. Uh, so I went back to the drawing board, back to the Menards yesterday, or Monday morning, and uh, I redid the drawings. Uh, so now this is what we come up with. This is going to be the layout for the kitchen now. Uh, this is where the issue was before. The refrigerator was actually flat there to that wall. And that's where it was. the window would be literally right here in this corner. So by moving it over, we shrunk down the cabinet. This goes down from 24 to 18. This one goes down from 36 to 6. Uh, by doing this, we're gaining about 13, 14 inches of space. By doing that, it would be the difference between the refrigerator stopping here and the refrigerator stopping here. So this is the story pole, like I was telling you about. If you're ever going to do a kitchen, you're ever going to think about it or change up the layout of your kitchen, don't be afraid to draw on your wall. That's a story pole by itself. Take your tape measure. Draw a 36 inch cabinet out. Draw your 18 inch cabinet out. That's basically what I did here. I got 36 and a half inches here, from here to there, half inch for the drywall. My 18 inch cabinet there with my outlet somewhat centered in the middle of it. This charred out or marked out line I have here is our stove to this point. Here's our outlet for the stove. And then here is the space for our 30-inch cabinet. 
this is this was tricky custom i really had to think about it but i got the outlet right in the center of where it needs to go this little line here represents the spacer for the plywood to encapsulate the refrigerator this is our 36 inch refrigerator if we get a 30 inch we can gain a little bit more space in the living room and then obviously our our outlet for the refrigerator so the kitchen itself is a is a big project um this is what we did yesterday i did i did knock all this drywall off uh and then we basically added since the same exact size of the refrigerator is the same size as the cabinet this is where the cabinet ends oh excuse me cabinet ends right here the center for our outlet which is equally spaced to this outlet for this cabinet uh, and then we have our switch for our under cabinet lighting and then for our light that's up there um, each wall has had its own circuit so we had to run a home or what we call a home run all the way back to the service panel and then that's where it got caught up or that's where we ended it at so the kitchen is 100 percent done uh the crawl space is also 100 percent done all the electrical down there is completely done uh the lights the circuit for the sump pump all the way up to the switch which is located right here so as you go down the stairs turn on the switch so there's switches for that light that goes in the middle of the mechanical room. There's a lot of pipe going on. And uh, again, I'm not an everyday electrician. So I know how to do it. I've done it before and I'm doing it now. And uh, let's just say I'm rusty at it and I'm getting a little better as time goes on. So uh, for today, the goal is to make that switch right there power a light that's going to be right above the door there. This house is basically going to be a modern house. I mean, there's no if and or buts about it. Once you open it up this far, you have to do everything by code. These are all things that are required by code. If I'm going to go that far, we might as well throw in some cool stuff in there, like adding a light here, a light there, to make it uh, really up to date. So, back to where I was. So, that switch needs to be connected to the box that we're going to mount up in this hole in the kitchen. Then it's got to go back to this box here then it goes to the giant hole in the kitchen or in the living room back to the switch box that's over by the door and then down the hall from this box up into a box above this door one in the corner and then one over there in the door i'm starting to think that i don't need the one in the corner i think just two lights is going to be more than enough to light the hallway up so uh but then from there there's a shutoff point to each bedroom. So if you come in this bedroom, you can shut off the hall light. Or if you go into this bedroom, you can shut off the hall light. I personally like it. And I, I'm the one who came up with that idea. Because why are you going to walk around in the dark when you can walk right in your bedroom and turn off the light? Makes sense to me. Everywhere in the house, when you walk out of the room, you should shut off the light. Or switch to shut off the light. Three-way circuit. Uh, in the hallway, it's actually a four-way because we have three switches. So that's a totally different lesson, and we'll get back, we'll get to that one another day. Um, so as for today, I need to get at it. We're gonna end this video here. Uh, one more thing, really quick, to show you guys that we did also get done yesterday uh, or Monday and Tuesday. We got the rest of the medicine cabinet area all framed out and plumbed. I uh, got the water lines coming up through the floor. We do that for winter problems, coldness, but that's a different story. We'll explain that when we're doing the insulation in the house, and then uh, we'll figure it out from there. So, love you guys, but Daddy's got to get to work. See you guys. Bye.